Hello AP Lit, today is Friday the 8th and this should be the end of my long-term sub leave. So your final activity is to reflect on part one as a whole. So your goal is to answer the focus question on Google Classroom. I believe it was posted yesterday. It's just an answer and then you answer in a paragraph format. It is due today and that is part of the rubric. So you wanna make sure that you get it taken care of today. Um, just needs to be submitted before midnight, but you do have time in class today to work on it. So what I wanted to do was show you the prompts and also show you an example writing, just so you kind of can see what I would call a good paragraph. Um, so question number one is, what are some of the key characters and secondary characters? What do they represent? What conditions might they have? So the goal in this question is to consider the mental ward as an identity, as a community, um, as a theme, mental conditions or mental illness. Um, we definitely have key characters, especially the focus characters down here, but you have mental health patients is what I'm asking you to kind of review and consider. Next, how does part one depict themes of conformity and rebellion? Um, I've made the claim in seminar earlier before I left that I don't think the book is actually entirely focused on mental health. I think it is a book about rebellion and conformity and society and you know, who fits into society and who doesn't, and how does society, quote, fix them. And then next, you could go back into characterization and consider um, Chief, McMurphy, and Nurse Ratchet. I would argue um, Chief is our protagonist, McMurphy is like an anti-hero, and then Nurse Ratchet is clearly our antagonist and our villain. So when you think about those as our focal characters, what are some of the key scenes with these characters? Um, what conflicts are emerging, obviously, between McMurphy and Nurse Ratchet, but also how do these conflicts and scenes shape Chief? And then finally, Chief explains his world in truths through symbolism and metaphor. This includes the fog, the combine, the repetition of machinery. So why? What do you think of these symbols and associations? Consider some of the imagery used and why it is important for Chief, for the themes, and for the big concepts of part one. So these could morph and they could evolve a little bit. I ended up doing um, kind of this in terms of the book 1984, but then it ended up kind of looking at symbolism a little bit. So, um, and then it also talks about rebellion. So some of these might overlap, which is perfectly fine. I'm just looking for your overall thoughts of part one and what it means. So I realize you have not read the book 1984, but I wanted you to see, because it does have similar themes, I wanted you to see how I wrote about it, how I was able to discuss um, the evidence, how I used evidence and commentary, how I used um, kind of discussion and context. So you do want to tag it. You do want to make sure you have a nice opening sentence. You do want to use evidence that's kind of scattered throughout part one. And then... Um, I kind of focused on a couple talking points to prove myself. <laughs> so Winston Smith from Orwell's dystopian novel 1984 is an odd duck. Actually, he is a violent, deranged, depressed, lonely, and paranoid man ruled by fear. He is terrified of Big Brother, the head of his government, and knows one day he will be, quote, vaporized because he lacks being venomously orthodox to his evil, totalitarian ruler. So I'm just kind of establishing the character. I'm establishing what motivates him, uh, fear. I'm establishing who he's fighting against, Big Brother. And so hopefully you can kind of get a sense of the story, even though you haven't read it. And I'm also trying grammar devices. I'm trying to be a little bit conversational with Odd Duck. I'm trying to use dashes. And in a minute, I use short sentences. Try to use it as, um, as if you were having a conversation with me but it's a little bit more polished because it's written. So, Winston is a rebel. His rebellion is highlighted by two key moments, the diary and the look-see. So what I did here is I didn't, I wanted to talk about two things. I don't talk about them super long and in depth, um, but I do think talking about one thing may not be enough, especially because the part one for this book is kind of similar to your part one. It's long, like both part ones are over a hundred pages. So I kind of talked about two things um, in a little bit of a medium length discussion. So his rebellion is highlighted by two key moments, the diary and the look-see. 
Winston's rebellion becomes reality when he rides down with Big Brother again and again, which is forbidden. This key scene shows the contrast of his sprawly writing on the creamy paper to the absolute madness of his world that is part one. The reason why he wrote in the journal? O'Brien. So O'Brien is a new character. The look-see the two men shared, so O'Brien and um, Winston look at each other during this crazy like event, and they kind of like are both looking at each other saying this is crazy. So the look-see the two men shared during the deranged scenes of the two minutes hate spark a flame of rebellion for Winston. O'Brien gives Winston a sense of bravery and hope because, as part one concludes, he tried to think of O'Brien for whom or to whom the diary was written. Who knows? Maybe Winston is just the man to take down BB. So you guys haven't finished reading, so you can linger it. You can propose a question to kind of close it. But hopefully this gives you some ideas of how long it should be, what to write, what to include, and things like that. All right. So goal today, look, answer that focus question. Hopefully your slides are good to go. Monday, I will be checking all things part one. I will be checking your notes. I will be checking this. I will definitely be um, having you guys present and share out your part one reflections. So thank you. I'm excited to see what you guys think. I miss our seminar discussion, so it will be good to get back into the game um, on Monday. All right, take care.